Hey everyone, Johnny Trucking here. And uh, today I'm celebrating my nine months on the road. It is actually exactly nine months today uh, that uh, I've been over the road with CFI. Uh, I think the last time I did one of these videos, I wanna say it was around the four month mark. And so it's been a while since I've done one of these kind of how are things going after nine months with CFI. And so I know that's what a lot of people are interested in. Like as, as the year goes along, do you still feel like you like working with CFI? Do you still like even driving at all? So I want to kind of go into a, just a little bit of that here uh, in this video. I'm going to try to not make this a long one. The last time I did this, it ended up like being like over an hour. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet because uh, I know you don't want to sit through an hour of me just talking, <laughs> even though I can easily do that. But anyways, so over these nine months, um, I feel like I have now at this point, I've gotten into a groove with things. It's taken about, about it was about that the six or seven month mark where I finally started feeling like uh, things were kind of going a lot smoother, a lot more, felt more, a lot more routine versus trying to figure things out. At this point now, I, I I counted it. I've driven through every state except for Maine. So I've driven 47 of the 48 states, and I've driven quite a bit on some of the more major uh, interstates pretty frequently, like I-10, I-35, I-12, I-55, I-65, uh, um, I-90. Uh, I've driven through a lot of those uh, highways pretty frequently to the point where I know when's a good time to go through them, when's a good time that's not to go through them, and when you want to try to miss things and traffic and all that other fun stuff, right? Which ones have really steep uh, uphill and downhills, you know, all of that. So I've been able to just grasped all that knowledge I've been like a sponge out here right and at this point now I feel like I'm able to get into a routine although it is still very difficult out here uh, to get in like a daily routine it just never is the same but I at least feel a lot more comfortable in what I'm doing at this point uh, backing I'm a lot more comfortable backing than I was nine months ago for sure even just maybe three to four months ago I'm a lot more comfortable if it's a 90 degree back it's a challenge but I know I can get it and I know I can do it and I don't feel like I'm gonna get stuck anymore U-turns, if I feel like I need a U-turn, I know exactly how much space I need to U-turn. If it doesn't look like I got it, I'm not going to try it. I'm just going to go until I can find a space, right? And those are things that maybe I was a little bit more reluctant to do or didn't quite understand. Turn radius, uh, how much space you need to to make a turn, to how much space, what do you need to do when you're in a tight turn situation? Just all these little things that I've kind of accumulated over the past nine months. Now it's just, it's all second nature now almost. And it's very easy to accomplish these things now than it was nine months ago. So it's pretty cool to see my, to see, be able to see your own improvement as uh, as you go along with this. It's kind of just exactly almost like I thought. Like I, I just thought to myself, I'm gonna get better at all this as time goes along. And not only have I gotten better at the driving part, I've gotten better at the logistics part. At this point, when it comes to the logistics, as soon as I get my plan in, I know exactly how to plan it. I know exactly how I should do it. I know how much time, I know how to plan how much time so that this way I know in between that I can take my breaks, that I'm not ever going to go over on my clock because I can manage it very, very well at this point. And so, that's the kind of things that I see with myself after nine months of driving and being out here on the road that it's starting to become second nature to me. It's starting to become a lot easier to do just everything out here. And so that this way at the end of my days, I feel like I have time to just relax, to chill, to cook, to watch some TV, to work out if I want to. Uh, and then I, and then I get to go home, right? So it's a lot easier, which means that over these past three or four months, I've been able to put down a lot more uh, miles down, which
which means that my pay has been a little bit more consistent than maybe it was over those first uh, four, four to six months. First, you know, month month one through month six, the pay was kind of it kind of fluctuated because I was still learning how to how to drive and learning how to put miles down without running into snags or problems and stuff like that. But things still happen and still. It, you know create some inconsistencies sometimes so I kind of want to go over some of those things well, with y'all working for CFI over these past nine months has been for the most part pretty good I continue to say after nine months that CFI has been a really good company as, as far as what I needed to be able to learn this trade I'm getting the miles I'm getting the experience um, and I'm getting, you know, I'm just getting a bunch of knowledge, right? And I'm getting the help that I need from the people that I would hope that I would be able to get, the, uh, that I would want the help from, like my boss. My fleet manager has been just amazing. I continue to say that, and she really, really is. She's very, very responsive to me. She explains everything very thoroughly, and she's honest. That's what I like about her, and I like about those kinds of people is I want you to be honest with me if I'm doing a terrible job or if I'm not doing well tell me that if I'm doing a great job tell me that if there's any way I can improve on what I'm doing be honest just don't don't blow smoke up my ass and don't like chew my ass out for no reason right make it make sense and she does that and I appreciate her so very much she's helped me out so much through this through these nine months even uh, through some really, really tough situations, she's really, really, really been calm and helped me out. And she's also been, and she's also, like I said, she's very blunt sometimes, but I like that and I appreciate that. Um, and so those are the best things that I like about working for CFI so far, right? Good, good communication with my field manager, good miles, uh, decent, uh, decent pay, right? Well, I'll go, I'll go into my pay a little bit more here in a, in a second, but uh, those are the big key things for me, right? Lately, though, there's been some things that I've kind of been like, man, I wish, like, if CFI can improve on some things, these are the things that I would tell them to improve. And in fact, I've actually told them these things because they've asked me that. What are the things that we can improve to make your life easier as a truck driver? Because during the first couple of months, I'm learning everything. So I don't really have any kind of, like, I don't, I feel like I don't have any say in my first, like, in your I feel like you don't have much say in your first six months because you're just learning everything. So you don't know how things work. You don't know how things are supposed to work or how things should be, right, in this industry because you're learning it. So for me, I felt like after six months, I feel like, okay, these are, I'm in a rhythm, I'm working well, and now I can kind of see, okay, these are things that I wish maybe we could improve on to maybe make things a little bit more seamless and easy. And there's not a lot of them. But to me, I think the number one thing, and, I, and this is not just a problem with CFI. This is a problem with pretty much every single trucking company out there that's at least a major carrier. Let me rephrase that. There's probably some really, really good ones out there that are really good with this and don't have this problem. But most major carriers seem to have this problem. That's dispatch. The people that work in dispatch are usually pretty nice people, pretty cool people. Some of them can be a little, uh, just you can tell they're not having a good day. And it's okay, it's fine, we all have that. The thing that kinda just I wish we could improve on is the times that you have to wait to be able to communicate with them. Whether that's because of staffing or procedure or whatever, right? Man, when you have over 2,000 drivers working for your company, if not more, you have to be able to have coverage for, for them to speak to dispatchers, in my opinion, without having to have them wait on the phone for over an hour sometimes. Sometimes things are, the situations are dicey and time is, uh, is of, of, of the essence and, and you're like, you need to talk to them, you need to talk to somebody right now. Like within the next five minutes, you have to be able to talk to somebody. And sometimes you'll sit there for 30 minutes on the phone just waiting for someone to answer. Or you'll have to leave a message with them and then they'll call you back, you know, 40 minutes later. And it's like, lately I felt like I've, I've been feeling like those times have just kind of been really, really long. And sometimes I don't care that much because I, I, I'm i calling with the notion that I am going to be waiting for 30 minutes. That's, that's the thing, though. 
I don't know if I should be comfortable being like, eh, it's okay, I'm gonna wait 30 minutes before I get hold of a dispatcher. In an ideal situation, you would, you, I would think 10 to 15 minutes is probably good. 30 minutes or more, I think is too long because a lot can happen in 30 minutes to an hour that you're trying to figure something out, right? It doesn't always happen that way. It's not every day that it's like that. Sometimes I'll call and I'll get somebody on the phone within two or three minutes, but it just depends, right? But that's the, if there was one thing that I wish we could improve on, I wish we could improve on having more dispatchers that to our disposal because drivers out here, the driver count is always gonna be about 2,000 to 3,000 active at a time, right? No matter whether or not it's day, night, whatever. There's gonna be a lot of drivers active every single day. So if you can't put the coverage in there, then something's gotta give and, and you have to do something different, I think, in my, but that's a problem for most, for most major carriers. So, I mean, it's just one of those, I guess it is what it is, but it is something I'd like to see uh, improve. Um, as far as uh, equipment goes, I st I'm still running this 2019 Kenworth here. The Kenworth, uh, it's, it's rolling on about, it's about to hit 400,000, which I, is pretty crazy to think about, but I know that these things can go, you know, a million to two million sometimes if we take care of them enough. But I can already see at 400,000 miles, the issues that the truck is starting to give me and how it's like, oh man, I would not want to be an owner operator. I tell you, not right now, because man, these batteries are going out pretty frequently. Uh, different little things like radars are going out. Uh, you're starting, you're, you start noticing that things aren't working as smoothly as they were 100,000 miles ago. You know, like maybe your power steering doesn't work as well. It works, but maybe not as well. Uh, you're starting to feel that the transmission's kind of slipping a little bit here and there. You know, it's not that bad though, but you start feeling those things as these things get older, especially uh, when you start reaching that 400,000 mark. And so, but I'm still rocking the 2019. It, it, it's working for me okay right now. I guess we'll see in the future if I get into something newer. I don't know yet. We'll find out soon enough. But uh, I know some people complain about the equipment here at CFI sometimes, but I I don't know. I, I think it's just different. And then it also comes down to the person, I think. I think as long, I think if you're taking care of it and you're paying attention to things, you might be able to catch things before they happen, but hey, Things happen in trucks, man. It's inevitable. These things aren't gonna live forever. They're gonna have some problems and the key is, is to always try to find a way to not be shut down, right? To not have to sit for so long because if you're sitting, you're not really getting paid that much. Uh, I found myself over the past two weeks sitting a little bit more than what I would have liked, but I'm hoping that this time, this go around after, after being home for a few days, that uh, that'll be different. We'll have to go and, and, and see from there. But communication is pretty, pretty good for the most part. Uh, you get your miles. I haven't had a problem with miles. I think at this point I'm at about 71 or 72, 71 or 72,000 miles since I started with CFI nine months ago. I think that's pretty good. I'm on track to probably finish out the year with about 100,000 uh, miles, which is, I think, really, really freaking cool. If I can finish the year at 100,000 miles, I can after 12 months, I think that would be really, really awesome. Uh, the only other thing that's kind of just interesting about CFI right now is that for the, uh, it's, it's, it's public knowledge out there now, but CFI is now a part of Heartland Express. And so with that comes a lot of transition. Uh, as far as I know, CFI dedicated is no longer a thing. The dedicated division, uh, well, let me rephrase this. CFI dedicated is a thing, but it belongs to TFI, which is the umbrella company that CFI is under. So the dedicated is now, it stays with TFI. The truckload, which is the OTR drivers, they all belong to Heartland Express now. So it's two different divisions working for two different companies, basically. Um, so that that's made things very interesting as we've lost uh, service access to our Atlanta yard 
and I think one of our other yards we've lost the service part so we can't go and get our truck service in those uh, yards anymore at those terminals at least the OTR drivers if you're dedicated you can but if you're OTR um, I believe those properties belong to TFI and they're not gonna allow OTR drivers to uh, utilize their facilities anymore for truck service I believe we can still go in there to drop off trailers and park but we can't get our truck service or repaired in those spots anymore so that's just goes with this heartland express transition which this is all still very very fresh so we don't know exactly how this is gonna how this is gonna go what things what amenities we're gonna be able to use and which ones we're not gonna be able to use anymore but I guess only time will tell so for those coming into CFI just keep in mind that uh, if you're coming into CFI, we're going to be under the Heartland Express umbrella, and so just be aware of that. Not uh, From what I've heard, it's not going to affect pay at all. Pay stays the same, nothing changes there. So, yeah. So with that being said, let's go into my pay. I know I don't really go into this very often, but now I think at nine months, I think it's easier for me to be able to show you how much I make and where I'm at. To kind of give you an idea once you start once you start getting more consistent what that's going to look like so for me at this point i'm still making 47 cents a mile that's where i'm going to stay at uh, until i reach 120,000 miles so for now i'm I'm, st I'm at 47 cents a mile i've been making that now for i think about seven months now i've been making 47 cents a mile like I said, I've been a little bit more consistent. Uh, I'm gonna and here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share a screenshot of just my maybe the last two months of my pay of my pay statements, so that you can uh, get an idea for how much I'm making per week. Hey guys, just wanted to jump in here real quick and explain that what you're looking at is the is my net earnings. These are not gross. These are after all the deductions. And then at this point. I'm also, uh, I've made, I looked at my yearly statement and right now I'm at $35,000 $35, since uh, at this year, so starting January, it's not counting my training pay that I had in December. This is starting obviously January 1st, uh, from January 1st all the way through September 9th, which is today's date, I have made $35,000 with CFI over the road truck driving in my first year so uh, if I accumulate everything kind of if I, if I think I can kind of maneuver a few things of course the holidays are coming up too but just based on general calculations I think I can end up at about 46 to 47 thousand maybe even 48 thousand by the end of the year so by the end of December I think I can end up at around forty-seven to forty-eight thousand dollars for the year. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but considering that this is a first, this is my first year truck driving. I've never had a truck driving job before in my entire life. I think forty-eight thousand sounds pretty good. Uh, it's not, I know it's not it's not what I'm used to. That's for sure. Excuse me. Um, I've gone. I've made as much as uh, sixty thousand before in a year, um, and I was usually averaging about fifty-two to fifty-three thousand over the past couple of years before that sixty thousand. So this is probably going to be the. Actually, no. Last year, I think I made about forty-five thousand dollars last year with the two jobs that I had, and then this year I'm probably going to be on track for about the same, about forty-seven, forty-eight thousand dollars by the time the end of the year comes along. For one year of rookie year of truck driving, I think that's pretty good because it could be less. You could be looking at twenty-five thousand or thirty thousand, right? So to be able to say that I made that I'm going to be able to make forty-seven to forty-eight thousand dollars in my first year of truck driving, I'm going to count that as as a, as good as a win. It all comes down to how much money you're trying to make right away, right? What your financial situations are and what you need to be comfortable in in your life, right? For me, 48000 for the first year of truck driving sounds pretty good. Can I make more? We're going to find out 
after the year's over. <laughs> We're gonna find out how that works after one year of truck driving. But for now, that's what I'm on track for. That's the honest, that is 100% truthful, 100% honest for those of you that are wondering how much you can make here at CFI in your first year of truck driving. It's gonna be about, if you push pretty hard and you don't take too, too much home time, you can make upwards of 48 to 50,000 in your first year. I think that's, that obviously I'm doing it, so it is very, very doable to make that in your first year of truck driving. Then it's up to you after that to figure out what you wanna do after that first year if you wanna to try to maybe shoot for some other jobs that may pay a little bit more, then that's honestly uh, what we all have to do as we go along in our trucking careers. But that's, that's what I'm getting paid right now. That's what I'm on track for. And so hopefully that helps y'all kind of figure out if you still want to try to come and work for CFI. For those of you that are new truck drivers, for those of you that are existing truck drivers and thinking about switching companies, I can't really tell you if CFI is the place for you to come because it really just comes down to how much you want, how much is comfortable for you and what kind of scenery you want to work around. I would say working for CFI has been really nice and I like the people at CFI and like I've said, the communication is really good and you're going to get miles. So you may not get, you know, 70 cents, a, 70 cents a mile or 80 cents a mile, um, but it just depends on what you're looking for, right? So as an existing driver, you may have to look into it a little bit more before you decide to make a transition. But for new drivers, I would say come over to CFI and that's coming from somebody that I don't make, I don't make any money, any more money pulling in new drivers to CFI. I'm gonna be honest with you. I only make any kind of extra money off of references if they're existing drivers. If you're a experienced driver and you wanna come over to CFI, I, I'll refer you, re use me as a reference, and I'm gonna make a little extra cash off of that. That's how the system works. That's how it works with most companies. But I do not make any money off of bringing in newcomers, people that have never had driving experience. I make no money. Feel free to reference me if you want, right? Use me as a reference, but I don't make any money. So just know that for you new drivers out there, everything that I'm telling you about CFI is 100% truthful. I'm not lying to you or I'm not blowing smoke up CFI's ass because I'm a company guy or anything like that. And I'm trying to entice you to, hey, come over to CFI because I'm gonna make all this, all this shit ton of money. That's not how this works for me. I'm being very, very honest with you because if you're really thinking about becoming a truck driver, I can't think of a better place to start your trucking career and get the experience that you're gonna be looking for that can help you out in the future than coming over to CFI and giving them a shot and going through the student training program. Um, so yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I can say there. It's been a hell of a, uh, nine months here at CFI uh, it's been really really cool to be able to travel the United States of America see things that i would never seen before in my entire life driving through mountains seeing beautiful sceneries being frustrated at times but hey it's all good it all comes with with truck driving so before I go here uh, I wanted to give uh, this is specifically probably for newbies for rookies right because most, most people that watch my videos are rookies. So at this point now, I feel comfortable giving tips to rookies now. <laughs> Been on the road long enough, I can give you, I can give you some tips. I'm going to do five quick tips here real quick. Okay, guys, so I just realized that I said five tips. Well, I didn't keep track of the count as I was doing them. So it's actually more of around five tips. <laughs> Enjoy anyways that'll help you out uh, before you come on and be and, and be a truck driver uh, I'm gonna give you five quick tips these are for rookies tip number one is bring plenty of blankets bring pl plenty of pillow plenty of pillows from home to make you feel comfortable in your space you want to make it feel like you were at like like if you're at home 
So don't go and buy a bunch of new blankets, a bunch of new pillows, because it's, it, it usually takes a couple of weeks before you're even comfortable in new pillows and new, and new bedding and stuff. Bring bedding from home. Make it feel a little more homey. Bring a piece of home here with you in the truck so that you feel more comfortable and it makes the transition uh, a lot easier. Number four, or number two, excuse me, number two, <laughs> bring your own tools. Bring so a socket set, Bring uh, go buy a sled, a little small sledgehammer. You're gonna need that a lot for the winter season. Uh, get yourself a socket set, get yourself some wheel chocks, uh, get yourself a hand broom. Uh, you know, just general uh, tools, scissors, screwdrivers, uh, maybe even a drill if you want to. You're not really gonna use it very often, but you never really know when you might need just a small tool to do something with real quick to tight, tighten up a bolt, uh, loosen up a bolt that you may need to. Uh, bring those with you. Bring notepads and pens with you. You're gonna be writing down a lot of things. You're gonna be doing a lot of paperwork in your first year of truck driving. So you're gonna need to have plenty of pens on hand. Pencils, bring pencils just in case you need to do manual log books. Bring plenty of pencils with you. Just bring all those things. Bring bring school, basically bring school supplies with you because you're gonna use them a lot more than what you think. And if you don't have them, it's gonna make life a lot difficult for you. If you know that your truck's not gonna have a mini fridge in it, bring a fridge. You can, and you don't have to buy, I've said this plenty of times, you don't have to buy the ones that are specifically made for trucks, which are the ones that will run about $400. You can go to Walmart, buy a $100 you know, a cubic inch mini fridge, and that'll be good enough to cool down some drinks, some and to bring some food to put some food in there for you so that you don't always have to eat out but invest in a mini fridge right away if you know your truck's not going to come with one invest in a mini fridge right away do not hesitate on that one then you can do, get other things like microwave if you want to get a microwave and then coffee maker and stuff like that another another quick tip that i can give you is before you go out on the road by yourself sign up for every single truck reward program you can which i think at this point i think there's about three or four of them but the three main ones that i would sign up for are the loves rewards program the pilot flying j rewards program and the ta petro rewards program those are three that you can do and you can sign up for online through the apps download the apps and uh, sign up for each and every single one of them before you get on the road because you're going to stop at those three places often. You're either gonna stop at a Lowe's, you're gonna stop at a TA, a TA Petro or a Flying J Pilot. No matter whether or not you're filling up at these locations or not, it's good to have the rewards program because you can use it for everything that you buy in the stores. And if you are filling up, you accumulate points through those programs that you can use in the store for food, for drinks, for mer general merchandise, or for showers. That's a big one. If you fill up at these spots and you're not using rewards programs, you are not getting your free showers. So you're wasting your money. So if you're going to fill up at either one of those locations, use your rewards programs you will get free showers in return. Nothing like a free shower because showers cost anywhere from 12 to $16 a shower depending on the location and where they're at. Another thing it helps you out with is being able to see what the reserve parking looks like at some of these locations and you can reserve parking ahead of time through those apps. Loves doesn't really do reserve parking, but uh, Pilot, Pilot, Pilot Flying J TA Petro does reserve parking at most of their locations and you can reserve ahead of time on the apps. So yes, sign up for the rewards program, download the applications for those uh, for these truck stops. Can't tell you how many times that's come in handy for me at this point. And then the last thing that, I, the last quick tip that I wanna give you, and it's more of a, it's not a physical tip, it's not anything you can go out and buy. The, tip, the biggest tip that I can give rookie truck drivers is stay very, very patient with yourself. During your first six months of driving, 
you are going to have plenty of days where you are going to feel frustrated where you are going to feel like you're not you're not doing this right you are going to feel rushed at times and you are going to feel like um, you're going to be panicked sometimes but the key to getting through it is to stay patient with yourself don't look down on yourself for making a few mistakes here and there you're gonna make some the key is to make sure that they aren't the big ones the big three in mistakes that you can make out on the road is hitting some hitting some, hitting someone hitting something and getting into a wreck those are the three biggest things that'll end your driving career right away. Don't hit anybody, and I mean this like physically, like you, if you're not careful, you can hit a person if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Two is you can hit an object that ain't moving, like especially when you're backing up, you can hit somebody's truck, you can hit a pole, you can, you know, and turning is the same thing, you can hit, hitting an object that is not moving is not a good thing and then of course just getting into a wreck on the road because you're not paying attention to what you're doing because you're rushing yourself all those things those three things the most common reason that people that that happens to people is because they're rushing because they're panicking because they're frustrated and you're more likely to do that in your first six months of truck driving than any time after that because you're learning because you're getting into different situations every single day and that every situation is not the same as it was the day before it's all different right you're getting used to how it's going you have to take a breath just like that <laughs> and you have to think about what you're doing and you have to stay patient with yourself throughout your first six months backing up this truck into spots is going to take you some time to get used to and sometimes it's going to take you less than five minutes sometimes it's going to take you 30 minutes if you need help stop your truck get out find somebody around that might be able to help you out not to say that every single piece of advice or every single person that's going to help you is going to help you out in the right way but What's worse, not asking for help when you know you need it and banging into somebody's truck, breaking your truck, or asking somebody for help and seeing if they can at least point you in the right direction to get you into a spot or get you out of a spot, right? You're stuck. Same thing. Don't do something because it's the fastest way to get out of the situation. Be patient with yourself. Take a breath. At the end of your work day, take some time to kind of stay, to calm yourself, get your nerves down, have a nice meal, drink some water, have a soda, whatever is your comfort, do that. But just know that things are gonna be a little rough in those first six months. Stay patient with yourself, believe in yourself, and you're gonna be all right. Don't don't be hasty. The uh, what, what is what is the saying? How it goes? Uh, slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> After six months, you should start getting used to things, and you won't be as frustrated are as uh, antsy as you were in those first six months but just know that you're not going to hop into this truck and you're not going to feel comfortable right away in your first six months it's, it's, a, it's a process and don't let anybody tell you you're you're a joke don't let anybody tell you that you're not a good truck driver in your first six months tell them i'm new i'm learning sorry nothing I can do about it I'm just I'm learning I'm new right people are gonna honk at you let them honk be safe out there guys it matters it's it's, it's your life 
that's that's on the line out here a lot of the times. So be patient with yourself. Be calm. <laughs> Well, guys, I think I've rambled long enough here. Uh, if, it, if you have any questions for me, never hesitate to ask. Put them in the comments. I will answer them as soon as I can. Of course, the Discord server is still open. I'll make sure to put the, to put the links back in there for that. The Discord is always open. You can communicate with me there. I'm on Instagram. You can, you can communicate with me there. Um, feel free, man. I'm an open book. At this point now, I'm an open book. You can ask me anything and I'll answer right back. But if you like what you're seeing, guys, remember to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be pumping out a lot more videos as we go along. I got my laptop back, so I'm ready to rock and roll again. But like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for when I put out more videos to get the notifications on those. But until then, guys, y'all stay safe out there. I hope y'all have a good weekend. Keep the rubber side down and the metal side up. And I'll see y'all down the road. Something, bing, 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 bang, bang. Something, bing, bang.